NFL Divisional Round Recap. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books down there. You go check them all out over at tunicatravel.com. It was a fun weekend. Yeah, this is one of my favorite weekends of all of the uh... The playoffs and the sports and everything like that. You well, get four this is, games. This is when your Pats finally get to <laughs> get to play. Get to play. They right? get to play and they usually win. Yeah. Um, now, but but all the other games I like too. This is when. Don't mean to offend people when I say this. People get really upset with me when I call certain teams real teams. Very sensitive about their teams. <laughs> this is where the real teams play. Yeah. I mean, you got Wild Card Weekend and teams kind of slide into the Wild Card. Every year, and they are on like a hot streak, and they roll, and then they get into this weekend, and you kind of find out, oh, there's a reason these four teams got to buy. Yep. There's a reason from like week five on, we had these four teams as pretty consistently the top four teams in the NFL, and yep. that's that. Um, we'll you start- are 8-0, oh, by the way. I am. I am 8-0. and oh. I figured you would lead with that. Well, I wasn't going to lead with it. A little... Trying to trying to humble myself. I'm actually very nervous about making every pick now. Sixty two percent over the year, which is my second year in a row to go over sixty percent in the NFL. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty they, bonkers. They don't build those big buildings that we bet in off of people winning all the time. I just feel like the wheels are going to come off eventually. And I'm well, you only got three games left. So like, it, even if you lose these three, it's not. <sighs> That's that dire. I know that, but it's still going to suck. Now, now um, next year is when you need to be careful. Yeah. Well, it's a whole new year. And, and we'll a bunch of new over. hires and, and start, all that. Start so. at zero and whatever, but 8 no right now. Um, 8 no in the playoffs. Pretty damn proud eight, of it. I'm, and over 62% on the year. I mean, that's. I'm 3 and 5. I, li- I literally picked every game wrong last week. Well, yeah, you went against every me on every game, which we don't look at each other's picks beforehand. The week before, you were 3 and 1. And 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 we we had almost all the same games, um, so yeah, it was a good week. What happens is is the wild card teams look great, underdogs cover cover cover, and then they get into this round, and the teams with the buy just they're so much better prepared. Like I had people going at me on on, not really on Twitter so much as uh, the YouTube comments where they were they were kind of saying, well, the the you don't have two weeks to prepare because you don't know who you're playing. It's like. <laughs> That's not how any of this works. To be able to work on your own game plans, you run a base defense and you run a base offense and you're putting together gimmick packages and special plays and all this stuff, and you don't care who you play. Well, And the staffs are so big now that you can actually have people scouting and setting up for either team. And That's right. And as soon as you know who the winner is of the team you're playing, you're now – you have a whole week of extra practice that nobody else got. But you got rest that you didn't have to get hit, beat up on. And then you instantly say, Jerry, give me your package. Steve, throw yours away. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. And you just now start infiltrating these plays and you start game planning. You're well, like that the, much the Chiefs, more ahead of everyone. The Chiefs knew at halftime of the, the exactly. Colts, Texas. Who they're playing. Now that's yeah. that's about the only game that was a blowout where you said, I know, I know who I'm playing. And and the people in the comments that want to talk about how the Colts uh, did not blow out 21-7 is not a blowout. Come on, man. Like, it, that game was dominated. On, you knew the Texans had no chance of That's coming right. back in that game. Yeah, anyway. Like, either way. But, so let's let's get into this. There's one common theme that right. I found in all four of these games between the team that won and the team that lost, and it's something that kind of didn't happen throughout the season. We had high-flying offenses, tons of scoring, lots of passing, and not a lot of defense. But you and I, our entire life, we grew up, we're SEC guys. We like, forget about just SEC guys, because Big Ten plays football this way. And the NFL has always been this way up until the last couple of years, where your best athletes are on defense, and the way to win football games has always been you run the ball, you stop the run. We actually have a T-shirt for sale. That's right. Winningcureseverything.com slash store. We've got the run the ball, stop the run shirt. That's right. We believe like, in that. And, and, and it's it, proven time and well, time again. It proved it all four of these games. The highest rushing team out of the four losing teams was the Colts at 87 yards. Yeah, which was 
uber surprising. That's right, because right. we thought they would run all over the Chiefs. Yeah. Ball control. So, so let's break down the Colts game. First three drives for the Colts, all three and out. We didn't see this Kansas City Chiefs defense all year look like this or do anything close to this. Three and outs. Chiefs first three drives, two touchdowns and a field goal. Ball game is over at that point. Yeah. Um, because they, at that point, Andrew Luck has – and yes, we understand that these teams were all behind and had to run the football going forward. That's right. Now, the only team that didn't was is, the is Eagles. The Saints. Yeah, the Saints and the Eagles game. That's the only game that was flip-flop. But the game was – it's hard to say this. If you just take all the quarters and all the stats, it's the exact same, except the Eagles got all their stuff in the first quarter and – the other three teams got all their stats in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But really, they had one quarter, and it booked in the game, and then the other three quarters, they just got roasted. Um, Mahomes throws for 278 yards, no touchdowns, didn't have to. They ran the football all over Damian Williams, the Colts. by the way, what a fantastic piece to have if you lose Kareem Hunt. Oh, Kareem Hunt, you going to kick somebody in the face? Yeah, we're going to let you go because we got this cat here that wasn't highly drafted and was kind of buried around uh, in college in, in a roster where he, LSU, like Alabama, usually has two, three, four runners. He was not Leonard Fournette. He was not Darius Geis coming out. Yeah. He did not have that big shining star that everyone thought was going to be a monster. But Andy Reid's offenses have just, I, while that's my guy, I can't take too much credit. He's been doing this my entire life. If you're a running back for Andy Reid, you are going to look like a stud. Yeah. So I, I don't uh, know if he would look this way if he was running for Arizona. I let, mean, it's just let, let's talk about the Rams then. Okay. CJ Anderson. <laughs> Holy mackerel, man! Look, I'm I'm fat, so I can say this. CJ Anderson's fat. Eight, yeah, he's a, he's a big boy. He's a big he, boy. He wasn't that way. He wasn't that size two years I, ago. I was amazed. when he came out of Clipson. He was a freak. I think that I think this is a different dude, isn't it? Oh, no. that was that was CJ somebody else. This ain't the oh, same guy. Oh, that was CJ Spiller. Yeah, I CJ apologize. Spiller. Yeah, that was literally just off. The I don't head. even know where CJ Anderson. I'm was finding school. out. You you talk about what you're going to talk about. Uh, but no, it, him coming in, he had been with what three teams this year? Yes, three non playoff teams, and got cut by all of them. Oh, he was from Cal. I I, I remember him now. Yeah, he was from Cal. So he, yeah. I'm telling you, man, he was. Uh, was he always that big? I don't think so. I don't remember that. But but Eddie Lacy wasn't always that big either. Well, no. Well, see, here's the thing: at Eddie at Lacey college campuses, you can you can control what these guys do a lot more easily. Yes. Right. So, but when they get out on their own and they're expected to go do this stuff by themselves, well, you have dietitians, you have weight trainers, you have. I mean, you're literally under a coach's thumb almost every day, almost every hour. And of some every guys day. tend to do better in a a scenario like that. Like Eddie oh. Lacy, I oh, think yes. did better at Alabama. Than he did out on his own, right? In Seattle, they were just trying to keep him under three bills, and they gave him like a hundred thousand dollar bonus. Yeah, I think it was under two fifty. But yeah, I don't know, man. Hey, by the way, I brought this up yeah. on the uh, the Daily yeah, Show rough. the other day. My wife's got me doing Whole Thirty. Have you heard of this Whole Thirty thing? Nope. So it's it's no processed foods, no processed sugars, um, and I thought it was going to be awful. Like no dairy, no processed food. Uh, no bread, but like we've had some pretty good meals, man. And my lunches have been like a sweet potato and some chicken and vegetables and whatever every day, and like fruits for snack and whatnot. Man, I am down 12 and a half pounds in two weeks. I'm not even working out. I think I found them. I mean, it is insane to me. They're, they're under this beard. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, back to C.J. Anderson, who was fantastic for the Rams against the Cowboys. Well, Cowboys defensive line was supposed to be awesome. Well, hang on. Let's 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 finish up with the Colts Chiefs game. Okay, that go ahead. I'm sorry. Thirteen thirty one, total blowout. Mahomes looked great. Yep. I mean, the Colts defense looked pretty strong going into this game. We thought, man, they're going to play some defense. We thought it was going to be a high scoring game. It wasn't. And and Andy Reid still. One of the best coaches in all of football. You're not just going to be a first year coach walking into Arrowhead and saying, I'm taking this W. Doesn't no, happen. You're right. We'll get to the Colts game or the, the Cowboys Rams game. Dallas, total rushing yards between Dak and Zeke, 
50. 50. 50. Everyone said, Rams can't stop the run. Zeke's going to run it all down their throat. Yeah, I think they forgot to do that. Yeah, I... Um, I think Indomitian Sue had a lot to do with that. I think Aaron Donald had a lot to do with that. Yeah. I think the Rams' defense said, we didn't play this way all year because we didn't have to. Yeah. But but we know in the playoffs, we got to stop Zeke. And if we stop Zeke, we stop the Cowboys' offense completely. Oh, yeah, because if they can't run... They can't pass. They can't pass at all. Rams, between all the running backs... The two receivers that rush the football a lot and uh, golf, 273 yards rushing right down the throat of this Cowboys defense that looked like nobody could score on them all year. Yeah. That has to be the most back-breaking, soul-crushing thing for the Cowboys. Now, if you go into this game and you lose a 13-7 to ball game against the Rams, you throw your hands up and say, we got to fix the offense in the offseason. But because your defense was one of the best defenses in the league this year. Yeah, I agree with that. And you let a guy named C.J. Anderson that had been cut from two different teams on his third team this year. Nobody I wanted hate, I thought he had been nobody, cut from three teams this year. Well, I know it was the Broncos. I know it was the Raiders. Who was the other team? Didn't he go to the, uh, the Seahawks for a little bit? Oh, I have no idea. I think, I think he was with the Seahawks for a bit and got cut. And, well, no, no, no. Maybe it wasn't them. Either way, I think it was but, three teams. So, uh, so he was on his fourth team this season. He got nobody picked up wanted in the him. middle of December. Yeah, that's right. And it was week sixteen. Nobody wanted him. They throw him on here. They say Gurley's a little banged up. We need somebody just to take some reps from him. And by the way, Gurley looked good too. Maybe there's a reason Gurley looks so good. That offensive line was pushing this big bad defense. These linebackers for the Dallas Cowboys are crazy strong, crazy fast, and crazy athletic. It did not matter. They yeah. got moved out of the way, and fat C.J. Anderson, he just rolled right through those holes. Just rolled through yeah. them. Totally broke their back. Totally broke their spirit. If there's one thing that you do great, and you say, we're going to win this game, we're going to stand on this hill right here, and that other team just rips it from you, that has to be crushing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty awful. I don't know what to do. Look, they won 10 games this year. I didn't think there was any way in Earth, they were going to be a 10 win team. They won a playoff game what against was, a decent team. What was the guy's name? Uh, Vander Esch, Vander something. Uh, uh, yeah, Vander Esch from the the guy from, from Boise. From Boise. Yeah. yeah. He was a a very pleasant surprise. Oh, yeah. I, I did Fantastic. not see him being that good. When they drafted him, I was like, what are they doing? No, that guy's a freak athlete. I didn't do enough draft homework on the small school kids. And and that's just wrong. He that guy that guy's a man child, and he he absolutely deserved to be drafted there. I don't know. So what happened is, I mean, the Rams offensive lineman came out. One of their offensive linemen came out and said, "We knew every defensive scheme they were running. Yeah, we knew everything, every play they were going to run on defense. We knew it as soon as we walked out there, and and we got checked into the right play, and we just took it away." Every time. Now, you hear about defenses doing that to offenses. Man, I've never seen an offense just say, oh, you're going to blitz here and you're going to do this without it being Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, like that level. And that's, that's that what level Sean guy, McVay has, Sean McVay. Yeah. Sean McVay was able to say, they're running this, run it here. They're doing this, run, check to this play, check to that play. And, and, and it worked like a charm. Um, it, scoreboard, 22-30, close game. Dallas took a lead in this game, but but they didn't have any control after the first quarter. I'm like, after, once the Rams started scoring, then it was over. They could not stop them. Dallas got a couple of big busted uh, touchdown plays, and, uh, you know, to make you, it close. You know where I watched uh, a lot of this game? No. Twain Steakhouse. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So I was I was over at Sam's Town. Good uh, eight. 16 ounce Delmonico ribeye. Yeah. No. That's I've, what I'm I've, talking about. I've been to Twain several times. So it's uh it was fantastic. Uh, good game. We'll move on to my Patriots Chargers on to Sunday. There's not a lot to discuss here, is not, it? Not no, I've got I've got I've got two notes. This was the most pathetic of all the run games out of all of them. <laughs> 
Patriots rushed for 155 yards, nothing like obscene or crazy. They ran the ball. They controlled the clock. Tom threw for over 300 yards. Yep. It like, like did what Tom does. And I'll get to the Patriots offense. The Chargers. I th- I was scared of this run game because I'd seen Justin Jackson. I'd seen Austin, El- uh, Austin e- oh, uh, e- Eckler. I can't even talk today. And I, and, I, and I love and fear in this game Melvin Gordon. Think Melvin Gordon's top five running back, maybe a top three running back in the NFL. Think he's a freak. They rushed the ball for 19 total yards. 19 total yards. Let me tell you why. Patriots' first five drives. Five. Not first two. First five drives, five touchdowns. Yeah, it was it was obscene. Chargers' first five drives, one touchdown. That's just – No field goals. That's just not fair. No red zone attempts. Like, no – I mean, not even, like, attempted field goal and, like, oh, the kicker missed it because that's what, do, like, the Chargers do. Just defensively, they shut the Chargers down totally. Now, why the Patriots were able to do that, I knew the second time they drove the ball down the field and scored with ease – I instantly knew this game's over with. And me and you have texted about this before because the Steelers have a really bad habit of doing the same thing. I don't know this for a fact. I don't know that I've ever watched a game where Tom Brady's ever lost to his own defense. And why you come into Gillette on a playoff weekend and you go into a zone defense and you think Tom Brady is not going to pick you apart? Even at 41 years old, he he can still read the defense. He's still the smartest guy out there. Yes. Like it, his body may not work as fast as his mind does, but if you play in a zone, it doesn't have to. It's not like Julian Edelman is is crazy fast and can break away. Play him man to man. Yeah, Julian is tough as nails, but he's not quick. Agreed. I, I, I don't know how great of a route runner the rest of these guys are. Like, no, I'm with you. Their I'd... best route run. Now you double team Gronk, which they did, and then you play everybody else straight up. And even then, I don't know that Gronk is. But no, you still have to double team because he's big and strong. Yeah, that you not because he's fast. Because well, I'm not, not saying he's fast. Anymore. I just he, I don't think he's. I think he's a shell of himself. Oh right no! Now. If you if you still played him man to man, he's still bigger than anybody that can guard him. And you that's can just, true. You can just cover him, and he'll just go up on top. Well, of he's it. bigger than anybody else on the football. That's field. it. So that but they they blocked with Gronk all day long. They ran. They just picked apart systematically a zone defense. I I'm not a professional football person. I I don't do that for a living. If I did, and I worked for a team that planned to play the Patriots, and they said our game plan is to go in to be a zone, I would go to the owner and say whoever's making this decision needs to either be fired now or brutally chastised until they change their mind. I mean, this, I, I don't know how to devise the the defense to stop them, but zone will not do it. I've no, watched it for worked. seventeen years. It's it's never worked against them. Uh, but the team that – so this was the perfect uh, better coach and better quarterback are always going to win, right? Yes. This was not because the, the Patriots' defense was so much better or anything like that. This was very simple. Phillip Rivers and Anthony Lynn is a worse combination than, than Tom, and Bill. Tom and Bill. Correct. That's just the way it is. No. But I thought Philip Rivers would put up a showing. I was excited to actually, like I said, they were. Oh, I my, thought so too. I, I had the Chargers plus I, four. I, I like I like Rivers. I want to see him finally break through this this barrier. Uh, as long as Tom continues to play, I don't know that he's going to. No. And I'll do this. That's not happening. That might not be on Phil's pro- uh, fault. Like if if you play a better defense against him, maybe he's got a fighting chance. No, but once you're down three touchdowns, it's thirty five seven going into halftime. Yeah, I mean it's it's. I don't done. know what you do with that. I mean, it, well, and on top of that, I mean, there were fumbles, like fumbled punt returns, and and all sorts of stuff. Like they were like just three mistakes. or four crucial spots where they got delay of games. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah, they, third they and made one. Now it's third and six. It's a huge big deal. Mental mistakes throughout this game, and I wonder if it was the weather, along with being in Gillette. Yep, I think it was just a bad spot for him. And again, we talk about this multiple times when we're when we're doing the gambling picks. The West Coast team coming East Coast for a noon kick, right? So like Brett Musburger pointed that out on Twitter. Three weeks in a row, the Chargers went West Coast to East Coast for a 1 o'clock game. Um, they did it week 17. Then they did it against the, uh, no, week, the Ravens. No, week 17 was, uh, was Denver. 
Oh. They played the Broncos. So it was, what, he, it was, said, he said it was three weeks in a row, so that didn't make any sense. They, they I, wouldn't play three teams – from well, the East Coast. I, well, it would have had to have been week 17, but you're right. They played Denver. I don't know where Brent got that from. Irrelevant. Back-to-back weeks, they had to go there. And my argument is this. Shame on the organization. When you beat Baltimore, you immediately stay in Baltimore for a week. You get yes. used to the cold weather. You, you've got a, a thousand stadiums that you could play in between Baltimore and, and, and New England that you could practice in. Yeah, but it, that costs money, and you oh, that's know. such bull crap, though. That's such bull crap. You're in the playoffs. If it's you win the, that game, you go play Kansas City, a team that you beat already once in Arrowhead this year, to go to the Super Bowl. You know you my feelings. You about don't the care about that little bit of money in the grand scheme of of the season. Yeah, but Spanos and he ain't wired like everybody else, man. And I think that's a lot of the reason why Rivers has not been to a Super Bowl. It, you you might be right on that, but that's on the organization. Them yes. being tired from traveling back and forth. It, the the second they beat Baltimore, they got to have hotel re- accommodations for the rest of the week. They got to have a practice facility already arranged for them to work out in. They need to be outdoors. They need to be working in those cold weathers in that in the Pacific, not in Pacific Northwest. Sorry, in the East Coast of the Northwest area, uh, Northeast area. Yeah, and um, and the, and they just need to. be be ready for that game. Just spend one week there. It's not that big of a deal. That's on the organization. Let's uh, let's jump to Eagle Saint. Best game of the weekend. Yeah, the Saints could not have looked worse to start the game. To start the. I've never seen a. We've seen wild card. Uh, not wild card teams. Uh, teams that got the bye week look rusty. I've never seen this. No. I mean, this was. Drew Brees well, opened up first play of the game interception. Well, this is why fumbles, bad snaps. Yeah, this this I mean, is why you don't like if you've got the bye. Maybe you don't rest the starters the last week. We, of the yes, season. right. I, I do because agree it, with it that. It had been three weeks since they played meaningful football. Correct. And if even then, the it bye, probably hadn't even been that long. It, it yeah, was, no, they were playing like week sixteen. Weeks. They were still playing week sixteen. Yeah, they yeah. played all the starters week sixteen. But you're right. Week seventeen, if you got the bye, you got to play guys because you can't take that much time off. For the Saints, this is embarrassing, and this is what scares me with picking the Saints over the Rams this week. Is I don't know who the left tackle is. I probably should know his name because they called it out about six times in the game. The dude had multiple false starts. If he didn't have a false start, he had a crucial holding call in in big time plays. I can't figure out how the offense, the one drive where they had to go 112 yards to score yeah, because they had kept getting backed up and backed up, it was all on this one cat. And that's the best That's the best tackle you got? Yeah. I mean, I, I know we're down in the crunch time of the season here, but, but you're going for a Super Bowl, man. Somebody's got to get in that guy's butt and figure out how to block somebody and how to remember the snap count. I, I don't I don't know what you do with that guy. And apparently they were talking about on the on the on the TV, like this is a pro like this is this is him all year. So the Saints gotta clean that up. First quarter looked awful. One guy for the Saints team had a great game. And that was Michael Thomas. Yeah. He he looked fantastic. Alvin Alvin Kamara was was not bad. No, he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. He he did what Alvin. He, it wasn't a special game by Alvin, but no. It was, and I guess that's what he's done has been so good lately. His standard is just a little higher. For his me. yeah, the expectation seventy for yards him is rushing way up there. And, and like I forgot what his receiving what, yards 50? were. Yeah, so I mean, if he's not getting you know 150, 200 yards total, it, it's it's kind of not special, which is weird. Thirty five yards receiving, um, but Michael Thomas. The second quarter on, Michael Thomas said, I'm going to take over this game. Yeah. They're not going to guard me. They're not going to block me. They're not going to stop me. And and I'm going to take over this game. Breeze, get me the ball. Don't screw this up. Yeah. No, you're right. Because I don't know that Drew had a great game. No, he didn't. And and that's that's partly why I'm going to be on the over this week. But oh yeah, two weeks in a row him not having a bad game. Yeah, I don't I don't buy that. But Lattimore, almost, it was so good to see him come back from the debacle that he had last year against the Vikings to yep. make the intercept hey not just the interception to end it but he had a great game all oh, the way around yeah. well after that first quarter like yes. they they shut them oh, it was down over. it was over the Eagles did nothing yeah you are correct it's garbage time it just all happened in the first quarter nope you are right you're right 
All right, that's going to wrap up the NFL Divisional Round Playoff Recap. As always, go over to tunicatravel.com, get more information on the six sports books over there, and and go to winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast, all the wonderful things. We'll check out the previews next time.